In our next section, we are going to discuss patient information and the storage and sharing of that information, referred to as informatics. We call this patient information management. The storage and protection of a patient information has become a hot topic with the invention of the internet, cloud-based storage, and electronic sharing of medical records. Because not all medical equipment is made by the same manufacturer and not all digital storage systems work the same, we need to have a common language. That language is DICOM. DICOM stands for Digital Communications in Medicine. This common language is necessary for a hospital or other healthcare facility to have equipment that can communicate between vendors. From the computer program used to schedule patients, to the GE CT scanner, the Toshiba MRI, the Siemens PAX system, and the Canon CD burner. If this universal language did not exist, or if all of these vendors did not use the same language, all facilities would have to have everything made by the same vendor, and this is not practical. In today's digital world in healthcare, there are many separate components that work alone and with other components. Each department has its own system, which is part of the larger hospital system. For example, radiology departments have an RIS, or Radiology Information System. This is part of the HIS, or Hospital Information System. The RIS performs functions such as scheduling examinations and networking images from the exam area to the radiologist's reading room, where radiologists use the system to generate reports. Images are stored in the RIS temporarily, but are ultimately transferred to the PACS, or Picture Archiving and Communication System, which is used for permanent storage. Communication does go both ways. So, if a set of images were needed, they could be pulled back into the RIS. The RIS is connected to the HIS so that radiologists can look up information on a patient from other departments. For example, if a patient had a biopsy, the radiologist could look up the pathology report. HIPAA is a very serious topic as it relates to the care and sharing of protected health information. Be careful. It deals with health information, but the I stands for insurance. HIPAA stands for Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act. The history behind HIPAA relates to a time before all healthcare records were electronic. Insurance companies were among the first to deal with electronic medical billing and coding practices. This law was created after insurance companies shared sensitive information about patients to their employers or family members. In today's world, HIPAA includes much more than insurance practices, as many technologists and healthcare workers have access to a wide variety of electronic information about patients, both current and past, those they are treating and those they are not. The bottom line is, the only people who should be accessing patient information 
are those who are caring directly for that patient or those who need that information to perform their jobs. An example of inappropriate access to medical records is a lab tech is in the ER to draw blood on a patient and notices a co-worker in the ER waiting room waiting to be seen. It would be wrong for that tech to access electronic records to find out why the co-worker is being seen. An example of an appropriate access to medical records would be a CT technologist has given iodinated contrast to a patient and must look up their lab results to evaluate renal function. Electronic healthcare records and electronic medical records mean the same thing. They are often referred to as EMRs and are one of the newest types of platforms for managing patient healthcare records. EMRs is a system of healthcare records that goes beyond the hospital information system because it extends to a network of organizations. There may be various doctors who are associated with the hospital, but not a part of the hospital's system directly. EMRs may also include pharmacies, specialists, therapists, and patient advocates. EMRs open up the opportunity for patients to have the entirety of their medical records virtually available to doctors at all times. Though it hasn't happened yet, the goal would be that a patient vacationing in Florida who has a medical emergency would be able to give their name or identification number to doctors that are there who can access their records back home in Walla Walla, Washington. Current EMRs require some kind of connection between various organizations. Many hospital systems now give patients access to healthcare apps for their phone, which will provide access to records. But if testing or surgeries are done at multiple hospitals, more than one app may be needed. In radiography, we have another concern with patients' records. How much radiation exposure have they had over the course of a lifetime? There is no accurate way to measure this, but it can be fairly easily estimated. Digital radiography equipment must give an exposure readout for each examination. Because this is part of the digital image record, we can easily save the information and make it part of the radiology information system records, which are sent to PACS. The RIS system can track doses at that institution. A problem arises if the patient has their chest x-ray at Hospital Z and their mammogram at the Women's Center and an arthrogram at another hospital for specialized medicine. Thinking again about EMRs where all records are connected, you can see that this would be another benefit to that system. Many hospitals do require the patient's total dose be included in the radiologist report. This doesn't give a total electronic record, but it could easily be tracked by the patient's primary care provider or by the patient if they access their reports. Documentation is an essential part of a patient's medical records, whether those records are on paper or compiled electronically. Documentation is a record of what was done to the patient, 
when it was done, the results, and how the patient tolerated the procedure. Medical records must include demographics. Patient demographics, such as name, date of birth, gender, ethnicity, height, weight, address, who they live with, and does the patient have a DNR or advanced directive. Patient history. What known chronic conditions does the patient have? What surgeries has the patient had? And are there any known allergies, for example? This would also include current situation. What is happening now? Why the patient was sent for testing? Or why the patient was admitted to the hospital? Physician orders. All active orders are placed here, along with documentation of when the procedure has been completed. Lab x-ray results. All reports from this type of procedure will be found here. Surgical history. A more detailed report from surgical procedures. Surgical procedures are dictated by the surgeon after surgery. This area would include information about implanted devices, which could be important, especially to MRI technologists. Nursing notes, progress notes, areas for notes from other healthcare providers. Radiographers will make notes here when a patient has radiologic procedures performed. The important thing to remember about medical records, if it wasn't written down, it wasn't done. Good medical records are essential in medical malpractice suits, and records should be clearly written, concise, accurate, and timely. Thanks for watching. To purchase the full course and earn your CE credits, click on the link in the description or head on over to our website at www.medical-professionals.com. And while you're there, check out our All Access Pass, where you can get unlimited CE credits for your state and ARRT renewal for just $49.99. We also offer a host of free resources to make it easier than ever for radiologic technologists like you to achieve excellence. Check out our free radiology CE webinars, clinical reference guides, and free CE courses on our website today. Be more than just certified. Choose medical professionals.